Welcome back, guys, to Wannabe Tuners, where we play around and try to go fast. Today in episode two of this ECU tuning series that I'm doing, we're going to be talking about air to fuel ratio. If you haven't seen episode one, I highly recommend checking that out, where we talked about boost-based tuning versus load-based tuning. Check that out so you guys can get a more fundamental grasp on where we're headed with all of this ECU tuning talk. So today we're talking air to fuel ratio. Air to fuel ratio is a very important area of discussion. And the reason for that is air to fuel ratio can play a significant role in power production, but more importantly, economy, well, more importantly, power production, but less importantly, economy, because obviously when we're tuning, we want to have big power, um, but we got to do it safely. So air to fuel ratio promotes safety and it also promotes fuel economy. How does it promote fuel economy? Well, under cruising conditions, you can actually run the air to fuel ratio a little bit leaner. And leaner is basically when there's too much oxygen, not enough fuel. Richer on the other hand is when there's too much fuel, not enough oxygen. So why is that important? Well, when you're cruising around town, you don't wanna be running it excessively rich because you're just wasting fuel you wanna run it a little leaner. So you can actually run it stoichiometric, which means just the right amount of oxygen to just the right amount of fuel where both the oxygen and fuel are fully combusted or burned or converted to a byproduct. Usually it's carbon dioxide. From what I've read, you can actually have water come out of that reaction. Stoichiometric though can vary between fuels. So on gasoline, it's usually 14.7 parts of oxygen to one part of fuel, which will have a full complete combustion where both the fuel and oxygen are completely consumed in that reaction. There's different stoichiometric ratios for ethanol, for example, for methanol, for different types of fuels, you're going to have a different stoichiometric ratio. If I recall correctly for ethanol, you need nine parts of oxygen to one part of ethanol. And I think for methanol, it's even richer. Um, I think it's six parts of oxygen to one part of fuel, which is much richer. So you're definitely spraying, injecting a lot more methanol or ethanol than you are gasoline. The difference here is with ethanol and methanol, you're getting a ton more octane. So you're able to push the limits even harder to make more power by either increasing the boost or increasing the ignition timing. So we're primarily obviously using my 2009 Mazda Speed 3 as an example here. It's a big turbo inline four. I mean, it wasn't always a big turbo, but I've upgraded it over the years. We've got a lot of videos on that. And it's to a point now where it's a really, really fun street car. There's so much to talk about when it comes to air to fuel ratio. And there's a lot of information online where you can do your own research and stuff like that. But I'm gonna give you my take on air to fuel ratio. What I like to use primarily um, in terms of ratios for pump gas, realistically. Um, but it goes deeper than just pump gas because a lot of times you can be mixing in ethanol or methanol with your gas to get more octane out of it. But in, if that's the case, you're not really gonna be targeting too much of a different air to fuel ratio, you're gonna be compensating for the increase oxygenation of the fuel. Cause once you start increasing the amount of ethanol or methanol in your gas mixed, in your gas mix, your fuel mix in the tank, you're gonna increase the amount of oxygen that's already present in the fuel. So inherently it's going to run leaner. So you're gonna to have to inject more fuel to meet the same air to fuel ratio in your data logs and stuff like that. We'll get more into that later. But as a fundamental understanding of air to fuel ratio, we need to kind of talk about it as a fundamental principle. So cruising around town, you're going to run it leaner, usually around stoichiometric 14.7 to one. But as you start to get into the gas pedal and you start building boost, you're going to transition away from a lean mixture and you're kind of going to kind of dip down into a richer mixture as boost increases. Now, I usually like to run an air to fuel ratio anywhere from 11.0 to one to 12 to one. Usually I'll meet right in the middle at about 11.5, 11.4. 
And then usually what I'll do is I'll taper it off a little richer, closer to 11 at red line, just to have a little bit more protection from detonation. How does a richer mixture protect the engine from detonation? How does it keep detonation under control? Well, if you think about what happens here in a stoichiometric air to fuel ratio where you have just the right amount of oxygen to just the right amount of fuel where both the oxygen and fuel are fully consumed in that reaction, that's fine and dandy. That's gonna give you good fuel economy and all that kind of stuff. But if we're trying to manage heat inside the combustion chamber to protect the engine and prevent detonation, we need to basically extract heat. So obviously during the combustion process, we're creating heat, we're using that heat to push the piston down. But once we're done using the heat, we don't want it to linger in there anymore, right? So what we end up doing here is we run a richer air to fuel ratio, a richer mixture, so that there's too much fuel, not enough oxygen. So there's not a full reaction that takes place. All the oxygen might get consumed, but since we have too much fuel, now you have a leftover fuel that doesn't get consumed in that reaction. So what happens to that leftover fuel? It vaporizes because it gets really hot in the cylinder. And what happens is that fuel just basically just vaporizes, turns into vapor, pretty much evaporates. Um, and during that process of vaporization, they call it latent heat of vaporization. What happens here is it absorbs residual heat left over from that combustion process, takes that heat, it gets driven out the exhaust system on the exhaust stroke. So if you do a run, let's say at 20 pounds of boost with a stoichiometric air to fuel ratio, 14.7 to one on gasoline, and you're getting detonation, Let's say you're reaching it up to 11.5 to one. You might notice that the detonation is completely gone, right? Because it absorbs a lot of the heat through that latent heat of vaporization process and drives the heat, excess heat out of the combustion cylinders, combustion chambers. And that's why we run rich. Super simple. Basically, if you want good fuel economy under light loads, running a stoichiometric air to fuel ratio is gonna get you that fuel economy. But as soon as you start getting into um, boost and making horsepower you want to dip down into a richer air to fuel ratio usually 11.0 to 1 to 12 to 1 is going to be a decent spot to be but i usually like to be on the safer side and run it low 11s to mid 11s with a rich taper up at the higher rpm range so that's pretty much the difference in how i look at air to fuel ratio but there's a lot of other things you can look into as well like a lot of times what I started doing recently is to try and improve fuel economy even more during cruising conditions. What I started doing is I actually started running it even leaner than 14.7. I started targeting 14.85 to one, where it doesn't necessarily affect the drivability. It still has good combustion, but now you're having a little extra oxygen in there, a little less fuel. So you're kind of sipping fuel as opposed to just sucking it back down too quickly. That was a weird way to put it, but you're basically just trying to improve fuel economy. Now, I don't know too much about whether or not running it too lean is a good idea or not, but you don't really start to see drivability issues until you get it too lean. And it kind of fluctuates anyways around 14.7, 14.8, stuff like that. If I can improve the fuel economy a little bit, I will. As soon as I get into boost though, I need to run it richer. Like I said, I'm usually around 11.5, 11.4 with the taper at higher RPMs. We want to prevent detonation by having excess fuel in the cylinders so that that excess fuel cannot be used in the combustion process because there's not enough oxygen in combination with the amount of fuel. So there's leftover fuel and that leftover fuel just vaporizes, absorbs heat and then gets driven out the exhaust. One way you can look at it is if you are taking a swim in a pool, right? And when you get out of the pool, why is it that you feel cold? Why, do you, why does your skin feel cold when you get out of the pool? When the wind hits your skin, why do you feel cold when there's water on you? It's because when you get out of the pool and the wind is hitting your skin, the water is actually evaporating off of your skin. You obviously can't see it because it's, it's, it's vapor being created in the moment and it's drying, it's, it's evaporating off your skin. And you feel cold because during that evaporation process, it's pulling heat away from your body. So you feel cold. Same kind of principle here where you have excess fuel that cannot be used in the combustion process because there's not enough oxygen for that reaction to take place. The vaporization of that excess fuel pulls heat out of the combustion chambers and keeps detonation 
under control. So this is why we need to understand air to fuel ratio, right? So that's my take on air to fuel ratio, guys. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. We'll get into boost pressure in episode three. So stay tuned for that. Talk to you soon.